market? Oh, sure. I mean, it's uh, at this time, the post-war and contemporary is literally going through the roof. Last year, it grew at 39%. Uh, Over the last five years, it's grown at a compound rate of almost 25%. Wow, so that's equivalent to what the housing market was doing if not for the more. last, right. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> uh, however, uh, old masters tend to be uh, not doing quite as well. And, and, and they're, they're still doing po in the positive territory, but they're growing more in the neighborhood of 8%. Eight, eight so there are wide discrepancies, but with those discrepancies go additional risk. So the highest art uh, asset class, the qu class that has the most risk, is also post-war and contemporary. Mm -hmm. So on a risk-return basis, you have to start thinking a, a little bit more carefully. Right. So, so but for, for individual, you know, individuals who are not quite in the, in the, the, the top tier of art buyers, are, are there other areas of, of the art market that, that you're seeing? And I, I know you only, you only track the public auctions. Right, because we need price transparency, and the exactly. only place you get that is at public auctions. So everybody pays attention to the multi-million dollar you know, prices. But, right, but, but those are, are there... the evening sale prices. Right. But during the day, there are day sales. And often you find many paintings transacting, I mean, not cheap, but uh, $25,000, $75,000 uh -huh. rather than $50 million. So um, there's lots of opportunity. And one of our major early studies that found, and it was very important, was that uh, low price works tend to outperform high price works. So just because you can't buy a masterpiece doesn't mean you are going to be poorly served by the art market. It's just the opposite. You're going to be well served by the art market by not buying the masterpieces, by buying uh, the low end of the market. And the low end of the market, and is that just a function of the, the price is lower, therefore the appreciation can be a lot higher as well, or it's just I there think, are more buyers there too? Well, I think it's, a, one, there's more opportunity uh -huh. uh, because there are more objects, and uh, I think it is easier for a $25,000 painting to rise to $50,000 right. than a $50 million painting rise to $100 million. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Bruce, you, the next best mm -hmm. theme for you is, is, is health care, and, and you just explained kind of the reasons uh, why. Health care, right. And so all the negatives that, that I can think of, and, and, and you know them extremely well, too, you know, the government regulation and, you know, price pressures and, you know, patents expiring and all this stuff. So, so uh, you know, what, do, does healthcare really have the kind of potential that that, uh, that you think you know deserves fair home funds well, attention? Well, the question is, who else is going to do it when it comes to the HMOs? I mean, the HMOs are doing the work for the government. They're doing the work for the defense forces. They care of Medicare, Medicaid, companies. They're the administrators, the uh, the gatekeepers, the people who are trying to rein in the excessive inflation of uh, Medicare because we, as I said, we all want to live forever and we right. want to still tap dance until the last day. And, and, and what about the big pharma companies? Well, big pharma companies have huge pipelines and we're just not involved in big pharma, but we're also very much involved with the generic drug companies right. because they're just catching all the drugs that are coming off patent. And, uh, and that will be a huge element of trying to rein in uh, the cost of health care. So, so that th this 30-year thir baby boomer generation that you're saying, I mean, e even if all of the, the worst scenarios come to pass, again, more government regulation and, uh, that, and price controls and everything else, that the money is just so overwhelming that's going into that sector that, that they, the well-run right. companies definitely right. will. And every member and every patient is a voter. And every patient is, 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 a, is, voter. is a voter, exactly. And I don't think the, uh, at the end of the day, what is, what is a more vital industry than our health and well-being? And of course, th this, uh, you know, he can speak to this as well because he's moved to Florida in the last year, so it's so right. much right. more health-oriented and, and right. also an older demographic yeah, as well. And, and the bigger, biggest user of health care vote in higher proportions than the younger people, so in a sense they're overrepresented in the political system. Not as any criticism, they're doing their civic duty by getting out and voting, but I think it re reinforces your point. Oh, that's very interesting. All right, it's time for the one investment for a long-term diversified portfolio, what, which each of us should own something of in a, in, a, in a diversified portfolio. So, Bruce, yours is in the healthcare sector. Uh, a, a quick story. Yes. Uh, late October, 200 agents, 200 FBI agents raided the campus of WellCare. And the stock was over $120 per share, went dramatically down to 20. It's now back into the 50s. Great company, high quality, over two and a half million voter members. They do a wonderful job. And they're at 
perfect and the company's doing the right thing. <laughs> this, is the, this is the story of Solomon <laughs> Brothers, of Health South, of all situations where a few people may do a little bit of wrong. Number one, independent board of directors comes, figures out what's going on. Number two, senior executives replace. Number three, you do your deal with the government and you do <coughs> and the government does not want thousands to suffer because of the the sort of mistakes of just a few. Right. So before you know it, uh, well care should be back. It's cheaply done and my biggest nightmare is I'm gonna wake up one morning and I'm gonna find out that someone else bought them. A, a larger company such as a WellPoint or United Health ends up buying them at too cheap a price. Oh, too cheap a price, all right, but that could be a positive as well. Um, and Marty Fritzen, international balance, you're not taking us into the junk bond market, you're taking us somewhere else. Well, I think that everyone needs the international diversification. It's really along the lines that Mike was talking about, the diversification of a different asset class. There's, I think, a, a widespread misperception that somehow you're taking greater risk by going outside the U.S. The risk clearly is not having the international diversification. If you look at the last year, last three years, last five years, you've benefited from uh, having the rest of the world in your oh, portfolio. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to go out and pick stocks if you feel more comfortable doing that in the United States. That certainly makes a lot of sense, so you can get a better handle on the stocks. But to, just to get the benefit of the stocks that will do well when the dollar is doing poorly, uh, when the economy is out of phase. You hear a lot about a decoupling uh, or greater uh, uh, in, in correlation right. of the different countries because you know you, that gets uh, debated long and, and hard, but over time there's no question in my mind that, that the you're going to get a benefit. It's no. going, and, and, and we chose because Morningstar recommends the Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund as, as a good uh, international fund. Uh, Mike Moses, you've got some art advice for us, and which is don't overpay for art. Right. Uh, it's always easy at auction to get uh, involved and uh, just keep getting involved and. Uh, pay too much and what we have found over time is that the rule of thumb should be you find out what a work sold for earlier you use an art index to increase that earlier value to its current time and don't pay more than that because the more you pay over the index inflated purchase price the lower your future returns are going to be and and there's a way if, if they go on your website for instance which we'll have a link to that there are ways to find out you know to to Exactly. Value that. What the and that's one of the major things we have on the website is a valuation tool that allows you to bring things from historical periods to All right. the present. Well, good advice for any asset classes. Don't overpay. <laughs> Bruce Berkowitz, great to have you here from Fairhold Fund. Thank you for coming up from Florida. Marty Fritzen, your new firm, Fritzen Investment Advisors. Congratulations for starting a money management firm. And Mike Moses, 